Hello and welcome to What Pet Should I Get? My name is Julia Batchelor. Today on the program, Claire Forndren will be here, of course, from Dogtails Rescue and Sanctuary. Later on, we head to Bradford to the Dreamwinds Equine Assisted Learning Center to learn about how we can improve our leadership skills by working with horses. And up first, of course, we have the adorable Callie Milliman with the equally adorable kitty. This is Hoisin and Fred. But before we talk about them, I just wanted a quick update. So our little sure. buddy, Scone. Yes. Scone was adopted. Yay. I'm so excited. Can we just bring up a picture quickly of Scone? Just there look at him. Is. He had quite a lot of interest, actually. Um, so it was great. He got he got adopted, and we had another uh, another young lady who wanted to adopt him as well. But uh, you know what? He found his forever home, so we couldn't be happier. A bidding war over Scone. You know what? <laughs> that cat, I know he's he had a little bit of a rough start, start in life. Amazing personality and yes. so deserving of a great home. So good on you out there for adopting Scone. Now, before we talk about these little guys, mm -hmm. um, summer's coming. It is. And we have the Summer Unleashed Camp. Talk to us about that. Yes, so um, we, we love our summer camp. It's a whole lot of fun. That's what I'll start off with. Um, our summer camp is a six-week camp. We offer it for two age groups. So you, uh, we have the group for ages six to eight, yep. and then we have another uh, four weeks of camp for ages uh, nine to 11. So uh, all the information and registration is up on our website, uh, which is peak.ontarioSPCA.ca. Make sure we have that link on our website. Yeah, and what you can do is go on there and choose which week works best for your child. A lot of times kids like to register with a friend uh, or what have you, and that's always a great option too. So uh, what we do, of course, there's animal time so that the kids get to check out our cats and kittens and our dogs and small nice. animals that are up for adoption. We have guest speakers that uh, come throughout the week. So we have dog safety guest speakers. We have York Region Police Canine Unit comes out. Um, we have reptilia that comes by so it's so much fun of course uh, lots of outdoor games and crafts it's honestly I wish there was a camp like that for, adults. When I, yeah, for adults or when I was a kid because I definitely would have been a part of it awesome um, registration is really filling up I will say some of the weeks are actually almost full already okay so we're encouraging people to get in there quick um, because it Sooner will fill up yeah okay great and you know I always say this I think children that grow up around animals they're become more empathetic hum human beings to not yeah. only other animals but to, to people in general and they become kinder souls there you go yeah. see and I mean there's a lot of kids that we have that um, can't have a pet and mm -hmm. it's really a great opportunity for uh, them to come in and get to interact with the animals um, and you know sometimes kids get into the camp and they say okay now I want to adopt <laughs> um, but that's not the point of the camp to get people to adopt it's just like you say to get kids with experience with animals and they just love it so and you never know you might have some future vet vets vet technicians yes yeah, exactly somebody who wants to be a zoologist biologist whatever Exactly. Right? You got it. So you had mentioned earlier, too, that um, one of the things that you talk about in camp is dog safety. Now it leads me to another program that you have, and it is called uh, No Hot Pets. That's right. So it launches tomorrow, Tuesday, May 24th, which is so exciting. Um, it's a national campaign. And this campaign is about awareness. Uh, yeah. So this campaign is getting people to understand the dangers of leaving a pet in a hot vehicle. So the weather has already been warm, as we know. Mm -hmm. Our call center is already getting calls every single day of dogs being left in cars. I can't stress enough the importance and the dangers of not leaving a pet in a vehicle. Um, in a very short period of time, it can be fatal to a dog. Um, so what we are trying to do is get people to visit the website, nohotpets.ca. They can take the pledge on there to say that they will not leave a pet in a hot, in a hot mm -hmm. vehicle, and they can get a decal for their, uh, for their vehicle to just keep pushing that message and, and share how important it really is. It's tragic that that message still has to be reinforced. And I know one of the things that you were talking about, too, is the idea that people think if they crack a window, that's enough. That is, that is nowhere near enough to make sure that your pet is safe and is not going to get overheated, correct? Uh, you're absolutely right. Um, you know, we have done those experiments where we have the vehicle, we have the windows cracked, all four of them, in fact, and you can still see the temperature rising dramatically and very rapidly in a vehicle to, uh, you know, fatal points. Yeah. So it's, it's not enough, unfortunately. Well, on to happier uh, topics. Yes. Let's talk about these two adorable, like honestly, people. Look how adorable Poison is. Like she's just sitting here. I think so she's relaxed. even falling asleep right now. She's so chilled out. And I've got little Fred here who's hanging out with me. Like I just, 
we're so content, Julia, you and I, right now with these babies. So they're only two months old, mm -hmm. so they're still very young. Uh, they were just fixed. Yep. Um, still and I know little, little belly shape. Yeah. I guess. And I know you guys were talking about uh, the kitten season last week, mm -hmm. and so uh, kitten season's upon us, and we're going to have a lot more kittens than just these two coming up for adoption. So these two are available. Uh, you can come into our adoption center and check out our cats and, of course, our ador adorable kittens who have been fixed. I'm just saying that Hoisin may not be available because I just <laughs> may take her home. That might happen. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. Now, let's talk about bringing a kitten home because sure. we all were sharing stories about uh, the hidden dangers in your house. Um, yeah. I was saying how my cat almost strangled when he was a little kitten, something I didn't expect, some, some lights hanging off a plant. Mm -hmm. Luckily, we were there to save him and those lights were put away. Yep. Some of the things that we should keep in mind. We all know cats are curious, especially kittens. Mm -hmm. They're very, Climbing very... Climbing and leaping oh, are their two key things they yeah, like to Yeah, they do. love to get into things yep. and check things out. So, you know, when we talk about um, bringing a, an animal home, it's not just the food, the water, the litter, and the necessities, but like you said, those dangers. So, you know, if you have things like medications hanging around or, or any tablets, Again, making sure that those are in a secure cupboard or a secure drawer that your pet cannot get into. Yep. Um, any cleaning products. So, yeah. of course, we all have our, you know, um, sprays and chemicals that we clean our house with. Those are really important to keep uh, put away securely. And as well, when we talk about cleaning, sometimes you put cleaning products in your toilet. Make sure you have your toilet seat down and it's closed. Especially if you have a small kitten too, you don't want to, he may not be able to, he'll climb in, he might not be able to get out. Exactly. Yeah. So there's two dangers there yeah. for sure. Um, as well, like you mentioned, lots of cords and strings. So that's maybe the number one. Uh -huh. So with uh, electric, electronic products, our phone chargers, our uh, radios, our stereos, our television cords, all electrical cords, find a way to secure them. Um, whether that's securing them with tacks down in a carpet um, or maybe taping them down in some fashion. Um, we don't want them to chew on it, number one, or get tangled in it. And yeah. then we all know those threads and strings that hang down from our curtains. Another strangling, uh, Just, I want to say yeah. opportunity, but there's a lot of, Yes. we've run out of time, but if you're looking, or you're interested in adopting Hoisin and Fred, visit our website, all the details will be on there, more about kitten proofing your home as well. Now here's Callie with this week's vet tip. The warm weather is finally here, and that means your pet is going to start to shed. Depending on the coat of your pet, you'll want to ensure that you get a brush that matches, whether it's a long hair cat or dog or a short hair. What you can do for them is take them outside or into a quiet space and brush all of their excess fur out. This will help them to feel a lot lighter and a lot cooler as we get into this warm weather. I'm Callie Millman with the Ontario SPCA and that is this week's Pet Tip. Welcome back. Joining me now is Claire Forndren from Dogtails Rescue and Sanctuary. And today she has brought Camilla with her. But before we talk about Camilla, I just want to remind everybody, last week you brought Hope. Yes. And um, can we bring up a picture of Hope? Just remind everybody how adorable this sweet dog is. There she is right there. <laughs> um, so what's the story on Hope? Is she still so, at the shelter or has she got a home yet? Yeah, so Hope is still waiting for home. So please, please, please come to our rescue and meet her on Sunday. We're open from 11 until 5. Yep. She's an amazing dog and she's still waiting for that and, special someone. And deserve it of a wonderful home, which she I know is. is out there. Yes. Now let's talk about your work as an organization adopting dogs that's because you guys are about to hit uh, an amazing milestone tell us yeah, about it yeah so we are five adoptions away from uh, adopting out 600 dogs that is since impressive opening. so we've only been open for a year and a half so it's been a pretty crazy year and a half and uh, yeah it's really exciting for us and to see these dogs in 600 amazing homes so many of these families keep in regular contact with mm -hmm. us it makes it all worth it so and you guys work so hard because I know your dogs some of them are, are um, given to you locally but you're traveling all over the world to get these dogs yeah. are the dogs that are being adopted out are they all being adopted out locally or are they too going to different parts of the world so uh, we require that we meet the family in person okay. before we agree to an adoption so, so we're local 
So it's mostly local. We've had people drive from as far away as Quebec uh, to adopt our dogs. We have a dog named Henry who's now a Frenchman. <laughs> but uh, yeah, most of it is within the GTA. Cool. Well, speaking of uh, dogs from exotic countries, mm -hmm. Camilla is from Israel. She is. And for people out there that uh, are thinking about adopting Camilla, if you speak Hebrew, that is a bonus because that's her first language, right? <laughs> yes, it is. It's funny. All of our dog handlers know at least a few Hebrew commands at this point. We have enough Israeli dogs now. <laughs> so talk to us about Camilla because I'm sure that the audience can notice her ears. Um, they're different. What happened? Yeah, so Camilla's ears were cut off. Um, you know which is not as uncommon as you would think. Um, a lot of people will cut their ears off because they plan on using the dogs as a guard dog, and if the dogs get in a fight, the ears okay. are one of the first things that can get bit. Um, they do it to make the dogs look more scary, and unfortunately... <laughs> I don't think that works with the Yeah, dog. she doesn't look very scary, no. but... <laughs> Yeah, and unfortunately, a lot of the time, this is done without um, proper anesthetic, and it isn't always done by a vet. Mm -hmm. So, um, Camilla is fine when you touch her ears, but a lot of our dogs that have been through the same thing, their ears are a really sensitive area for and them, and they're terrified if you yeah. try to touch them. So, well, I can honestly say from Camilla's demeanor from when she arrived, it's a little bit intimidating. The studio, she seems to be starting to relax. Yes. So she, <laughs> she, she's a, she's got a good personality. Yeah. Everything is new to her right yeah. now. I mean, she just got here a week ago. Yeah. So traveling on a plane for the first time, new country, new environment, and now she's on TV. So and now she's going to be a TV star <laughs> and hopefully find, oh look, she's there totally relaxing. Go. Now she came over here with 20 dogs in total. Yes. And you have a few other dogs that we brought photos of. Yes. Um, that came um, from the same shelter mm -hmm. in Israel. So we have Stephanie and Snoopy. Um, if we can show a picture of them. There they are. Uh, so, so Stephanie they're... and Snoopy are, what kind of dogs are they? Uh, so they're like a lab shepherd mix. <laughs> um, and they're a bonded pair. So, so they you want them home. to be adopted together. Exactly. When they're separated, they get very stressed out. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they need to be together. Um, and we have Sabrina. And Sabrina is... Oh, look at her. She's yeah. so pretty. What kind like of dog a is that? Border Collie Asian Shepherd. Super mix. smart dog. Yes. So if you're looking for a highly intelligent breed that can learn lots of tricks and everything in either Hebrew or English. <laughs> and very active and yeah. energetic, too. How so. old is Sabrina? Uh, she, we think, is about six years old. Okay, so yeah. she's still fairly young. Yes. And we have Mila. Yes. So Mila is. Mila kind of dog is she? Another shepherd mix, and she's an older lady. We think she's about eight. And she is just lovely. She yeah. is one of my favorites. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now, working at a dog shelter, I find it when the pets come here every week, I have to fight and resist adopting a pet every week because <laughs> then I would turn into an animal hoarder. Yeah. How must that be for you? It is my daily struggle yeah. not to bring all of the dogs home with me. If, <laughs> if I didn't think my boyfriend would leave me, I would have 80 dogs by now, definitely. I'm in the same situation. <laughs> now, let's get back to Camilla because Camilla's about five years old, so she's still fairly young. Yeah. Um, and obviously she's good around other dogs because she's lived her whole life around other dogs. Yeah. And what's she been assessed for as far as like a good family fit? So she is a very shy dog, but she is very, she'll let you do anything. She's very patient. She has no areas that are sensitive when you touch them. She has no issues with food or toys. So um, as long as it's a patient home that's willing to help build some confidence with her, I think she'd be good almost anywhere. So I would say possibly maybe not young children, only because yeah. kids are a little bit more, they're exuberant yeah. and that might intimidate her a little. You know, I yeah, have a cat so kind of like that. Yeah, so not super young children, but I think children, you know, 10 and up would be okay with her. Good. Mm -hmm. Well, we always say, you know, we showed you some photos. We show you some photos of uh, the dogs that are available. We always say, you come to the shelter. And now that the weather's turning beautiful, too, I imagine that it's such a great place just to spend those couple hours on Sunday from 11 to 5. And you can meet Camilla, and you can meet Stephanie and Soupy, Sabrina and Mila all in person, right? Yes, and all of our horses, too. It's a lot of fun to just walk the grounds and look at them, and our donkeys and cows, the whole shebang. <laughs> all right, so if you're interested in Camilla or any of the other dogs that you've seen, want to go visit Dog Tales, all the information 
is available on our website. Now, on the other side of the break, we are going to be traveling to the Dream Winds Equine Assisted Learning Center to learn how we can improve our skills as leaders by working with horses, which is pretty darn cool. Now, here is Dr. MJ Winters with this week's vet tip. If you own a cat, no doubt you own a litter box. Inappropriate urination, or not wanting to urinate at all in the litter box, are issues that we have to deal with at this clinic on a daily basis. This may be medical, or it could be behavioural. If the problem for your cat is behavioural in origin, here are some tips to help you. Increase the number of litter box available to your cat. Change the litter, or the type of litter in the box. Change the location of the litter box, as a quieter place may be what your cat requires. Also, taking into account pheromones. Pheromones are hormones that you can spray in your house to make your cat feel more at ease and happier in the litter box. There's also a diet available that can also help to reduce your cat's stress and help their bladder health. If the issue is medical in origin, there may be other things you might notice along with the inappropriate urination. Increased trips to the litter box and no urine being produced at all, appearing painful when in the litter box, vocalizing when trying to urinate, and even painful when the abdomen is touched. These and other irregularities with your cat should be noted and discussed with your vet. Because as you know, immediate action may save your cat's life. I'm Dr. MJ Winters at 404 Emergency and Referral Hospital, and that's this week's Vet Tip. Hey guys, we are here at DreamWinds Equine Assisted Learning Center located right here in Bradford and this is a great facility. This place offers all kinds of programs that deal with leadership training, personal development, team building, but tonight, tonight is all about the ladies. But you might need to maneuver him a little bit. You saw me back him up, so if you need Owner to Owner Tracy up, Evans was a late bloomer to the world of riding. It wasn't until age 31 she began to ride, and when she bought her first horse, a spirited thoroughbred named Public Mischief, Tracy had an epiphany. He was a little bit crazy. He wasn't very confident under saddle, so I took some lessons in horsemanship, and everything I learned in those horsemanship programs were the same tools and tricks I needed to teach leadership to my teams at work. So I just dreamt of connecting leadership and team building using horses. Tracy says all the tools and behaviors we need to be strong leaders to our horses are the same tools we need to be strong leaders in the workforce. Good boy. You can also push them sideways. Horses are prey animals, so for them they're constantly surveying their area to understand whether or not it's a safe or a, or a dangerous environment or whether somebody or something coming towards them is threatening or um, or benign or friendly. So they're, they're food essentially. So that's really important to them to be, to be checking their environment. So they're always evaluating us as we work with them and telling us whether or not they feel safe, whether they feel confident, whether they trust us enough to follow us. They also live in a herd environment. So they consider us part of their herd when we work together yep. and that herd keeps them safe. So everybody has a job. Everybody knows their position in the hierarchy and they make sure that they keep the herd safe. So they let us know as facilitators what going on with the herd and we can help then help the people understand what what's happening within that group that's creating either great relaxation and trust in the horse or some angst and some uncertainty why won't the horse follow that person why won't the horse cooperate with that team and we be, we're able to then link that back to their environment in the work environment in their home environment with their families with their kids um, it's all very easily relatable to outside of the arena the link your arms together the person in the middle is the brain and the arms can do nothing Ladies and Night I'm is a great, fun opportunity to get together with a bunch of ladies that are um, looking for self-development. So looking for ways to improve, looking for ways to build confidence, um, looking for ways to just kind of evaluate their life and be do something different. Some people are here to get out of their comfort zone, which is awesome. There's no better way to um, expand your horizons than getting over a fear. So we see that quite often. But a lot of ladies are here, to, you know, for the camaraderie and for and to build some confidence and learn a little bit about the horses and a little bit about themselves. Tonight, 
The attendees are split up into groups and must navigate a series of exercises that will call upon a variety of skills. So at each exercise, they are tasked with different problem-solving scenarios or obstacles to get around, and they need the cooperation of the horse to do that because the horse is part of their team. When things go awry, we're able as facilitators to help kind of do little mini debriefs at those exercises to sort of get to the bottom of what's happening. And they move from obstacle to obstacle. As they go through those obstacles, they have an opportunity to actually refine their skills. Okay, so me and my team are about to do this uh, leadership trust exercise. I'm actually going to be blind, and I'm going to lead Oliver through this maze with the directions of my brains and my arms. So wish me luck. Horses are looking for confidence, so and, and it's not uncommon that we will have someone come to the program that's fearful. So the first thing we do is we do a safety demonstration, and we teach people some of the key things that help a horse understand that you're, you're their leader. And we also show them how easy and easygoing our horses are and how you can push them around, you can move them, you can have them cooperate with you. Um, in the herd environment, horses that are being pushed are the ones that are further down on the hierarchy. So if you can push a horse, and I don't mean we're not pushing the horses all over the place, but if you can make a horse move, um, you are up in the hierarchy. So it's not about pulling them around, it's actually about pushing them around. So what we do is we teach people some of those ways that we can gently and passively push a horse in order to establish that leadership. We help build their confidence with the horse by showing this is what they want. They actually want a leader. Like he was just a little confused and he could probably sense that there was a pylon between his legs. So Good he was like, I can't man. go, I can't go. Good what, man. What was it like for you, Julia, to be blind? That was awesome, actually. <laughs> cool, eh? It was really cool. And for Karen Spears, being here at Dreamwinds has helped her get over a childhood trauma. I uh, had a bad accident as a kid with a horse, so loved them, but always uncomfortable around them. And uh, so my husband and I were here for a date night, just a fun night out. And um, I was nervous, uh, but he got me through. We, 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 I put the blindfold on. I was very uncomfortable. Um, but Tracy helped me work with the horse and understand the horse's body language. And then, of course, my husband working and I working as a team, um, I got through the obstacle course. I couldn't believe I did it. I just felt amazing afterwards. And uh, I faced that fear, but it also taught me a lot about how we communicate. Participating in these activities has not only helped Karen with her personal growth, but she has also been able to apply what she has learned to her professional life. Well, it's really interesting to watch the dynamics of a group working together, and especially people that we don't know. So again, as a manager, I always look to identify or help understand what people's strengths are and what they can bring to the team, and then I always want to build on those strengths. So in, in these exercises, you're absolutely looking to to see who who's going to be the communicator. So for instance, who's going to do the communication and, and guiding and directing uh, other people who can't speak but have to move obstacles and so forth. So it's really interesting to watch how that comes together. Okay, so this is Andrea, and she was one of my teammates. And Andrea's role was, uh, she took the role of the brain on many of the exercises. It seemed like a natural fit for you, too. I had a little bit of experience. I was comfortable sometimes giving directions and leading the way. What do you do in your work life? I teach. Okay, so okay, so you, you're used to being <laughs> the leader. used to giving orders, yeah. And any of the things that you did tonight, would you take any of these lessons back to the classroom? Will you like give your oh, those yes. children a little bit of a yeah. push? Well, I'm always <laughs> imagining how what my students could do to benefit from this experience as well, and how they they could learn to lead, and how to communicate, and how to let other people take the lead. So I'm always thinking in terms of how students would benefit from the experience and learn as well. This program is really great at creating self-reflection. So you really do get to look at yourself and understand what, what am I causing. Horses are very simple, they just react. So we do teach the key areas to watch for in the horse, whether it's their ears, whether it's them being a little disengaged or too engaged, maybe they're pushing boundaries. And that's what makes our corporate training so profound. No other training that you take really forces you to say, okay, well, what did I do to cause that? What, how am I going to get better? Um, it's too easy to sit behind a desk and listen to training and say, oh, that's that guy, that's that person. Um, but you can't do that here. You own it because the horses are, re are feeding back to you. And they want to be good and they want to work with you. Um, and people generally want to be successful with them. Now, if you're thinking about doing something just a little bit outside of the box, 
when it comes to personal development and leadership training, think about coming to DreamWinds. What a unique way to develop skills to be better in the boardroom by hanging out with horses. Or if you just want to have a unique date night or hang out with your girlfriends. Now, the programs run all year round here. So if you want more information, you just have to visit DreamWinds.ca.